CEO of the Workplace Gender Equality Agency. We just had our uh, classic technical challenges, but we've got them all sorted and, and welcome today. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, the traditional owners of the many lands we're joining from today uh, for this live chat. And please put your questions into the chat. I'm just going to do a quick introduction and then we've got a few minutes if there's some questions. So today is Equal Pay Day. It represents the 56 additional days that women have to work on average. Uh, than men uh, beyond the end of the financial year to earn the same amount that uh, men did in just the financial year. So it's a very tangible representation of the gender pay gap, which is at 13%. Uh, and we use the gender pay gap as a proxy for gender equality. Um, and these 56 days um, is another clear representation of the, of the difference in how women and men uh, are viewed, valued, um, and rewarded uh, in the workplace. So just to be very clear, um, the gender pay gap is the difference in the average earnings between men and women. It's not equal pay, it's not about the same pay for the same work, but it also it represents that combination of both pay and the composition of workforce, the seniority, those higher paid roles um, that are predominantly and often taken up by men. Um, in just you know, in every industry uh, and in every occupation right across Australia. And the 13% gender pay gap says that for every dollar that a man, man earns, women earn 87 cents. Um, this gender pay gap has been coming down and, and in fact the latest uh, numbers were the lowest that we've had on record, which is great, uh, but progress is slow and there's still that gap because that 13% uh, gender pay gap uh, not only represents 87 cents in the dollar, but it represents $252 a week or over $13,000 um, in a year. And what's missing does matter because that differential shows that women's skills, capabilities aren't being valued um, and aren't being utilised to the same extent uh, that men's are in our workplace. So our highest industries are industries like professional services, um, and interestingly, healthcare and social assistance, both of them have gender pay gaps of over 20%. Um, and even in a highly feminised industry like healthcare and social assistance, uh, there is that differential between how men and women uh, are paid and how they earn. Um, from a looking across Australia perspective, um, what we see is that Western Australia has the highest gender pay gap at over 21%. Um, and so what that translates to, here we are at 56 days at the end of the financial year on average, it would add nearly another month to that uh, equal pay day um, for the state of Western Australia. Um, on the other hand, Tasmania only has a gender pay gap of about 5%, um, so you know, a much shorter period of time. And that represents um, you know, both the industrial structure of the states um, uh, and also uh, those higher paying industries uh, such as mining and construction um, being predominantly part of the economy versus perhaps um, more equal paying industries like public administration or tourism and hospitality um, that uh, dominates the, the industrial structure in Tasmania. So what can we do about it? Um, we're calling on employers uh, to acknowledge their gender pay gap um, and to do the analysis to work out what's driving it and then to put in place the actions that we believe are needed uh, or they identify are needed through their work um, that can close the, ja the gap and create a more gender equal uh, workplace and environment. Uh, so there's very clear advice and Wajia provides advice and support in terms of how to actually go through that process. Um, but this Equal Pay Day we're calling on all employers um, to uh, look at their gender pay gaps uh, do the analysis, do the thinking uh, and drive the changes that, that will be different in every workplace but are clearly there and opportunities to achieve that change. One thing that's happening early next year is that um, we will be publishing employer gender pay gaps. We previously haven't had the capacity to do that, we've been limited by our legislation um, but that legislation has now changed and we will be publishing employer gender pay gaps as a catalyst for transparency and action um, so that that information being available to the community, to employees, to prospective employees um, will actually give that basis of information um, for people to be able to understand what's happening in workplaces um, and how equal um, they are and, and what they're doing to try and address 
um, those differentials. So I've got a couple of questions already coming through. Thanks very much for that. Um, the first question actually says, do you think publishing employer gender pay gaps will reduce the national uh, gender pay gap? Now, one thing I want to be very clear on is that there's, there's two gender pay gaps that Wajia publishes. One is this national gender pay gap of 13%, and that's based on the Australian Bureau of Statistics data that they publish twice a year. And it represents full-time workers, and it represents uh, base salary. The second gender pay gap that we publish is the Wajia gender pay gap, and it actually represents medium and large businesses. But we think all the workforce should be included. So we include part-time workers, but annualise their salaries so that it's comparable. But we also include all pay, because uh, you know things like superannuation, things like bonuses, um, you know, all the compensation, just not the base salary, because we know often those uh, additional payments um, go to higher paying roles which are predominantly men. Um, so that actually is a truer reflection of the actual uh, actuality of the gender pay gap. And our Wajia gender pay gap is currently at 22.8%, so quite a differential. So that's a first of all, just an explainer between the two. But we do believe that publishing gender pay gaps will reduce, uh, is a catalyst for reducing them. And what we're drawing on is the experience in the UK who have been publishing gender pay gaps had this um, publishing at the employer level for about six years. And what the evidence is showing out of the UK is that um, it has led to a reduction in the gender pay gap. It's not a silver bullet. Uh, it doesn't all happen overnight, um, but that it has been a sustained reduction over time. And particularly those employers and those industries where the gender pay gap is higher than the average uh, have made concerted efforts to bring their gender pay gaps down. So that's exactly what we want to achieve. We want to, um, through the publishing of gender employer gender pay gaps, drive down, uh, help you know, be the catalyst for that change to drive down uh, gender pay gaps in individual employers. Now, I've got a second question uh, here just coming through uh, from Rana, thanks. Can you talk us through uh, any action happening around collecting intersectional data? And that's a great question and a really important one, one we're working on right now. So we had a recent review of our Act um, and one of the recommendations, the government's committed to all the recommendations and about more than half of them have already been implemented, including publishing employer gender pay gaps. Um, one that we're still working on is the collection of uh, broader diversity data. And that's both a broader definition of uh, gender um, beyond men and women, um, but also other aspects of uh, diversity such as uh, people with a disability, people from a different cultural and linguistic background, um, uh, our First Nations community. And we're doing some work to literally go through how that could be collected because uh, at the moment uh, most employers don't collect it. Uh, we need to support them to be able to collect the information in the first place to then be able to report it to AGEA, which would enable us to then be able to do, um, obviously we're, we're gender focused, but do a broader intersectional analysis about how uh, people's varying identities uh, intersect with gender and their experience in the workplace. Um, and uh, what we then can identify is more detailed and nuanced, nuanced uh, solutions in terms of addressing uh, the issues and the disadvantages that they face. So um, there's good progress on that, uh, and um, we are optimistic um, of making progress in, in collecting uh, intersectional data um, over time, uh, understanding that the first thing that employers have to do is make sure that the environment is safe and that employees can feel confident uh, to, col to contribute and uh, disclose that information in the first place. Another question that's come through is said, how do we use all the momentum around high profile women in the media at the moment, like the Matildas and Taylor Swift, uh, to drive change for all women? And it is uh, fantastic um, that uh, we've had you know, just amazing performances across the board in relation to uh, women in sport, you know, the Matildas have been amazing, um, but also women in entertainment and even the, the Barbie movie and the fact that it's directed and uh, starred in by women and, and grossing such high results. Um, but the, the, the opportunity is to turn this moment um, into momentum for the movement that we have. How do we make sure that 
um, all the barriers that women experience, whether it is in uh, careers in sport or entertainment or more broadly in, in all workplaces across Australia. Um, how do we remove those barriers that have been identified um, and make sure that women's full potential capabilities skill um, are genuinely valued um, in terms of uh, how we can contribute um, and you know, how we can be, be part of the solution um, for the challenges that, that uh, our workforces uh, and our employers face. Uh, so any last questions, if there's anything uh, else from anyone, uh, shoot it through. Um, so don't forget, um, it's not a happy uh, equal pay day, it's a, let's acknowledge equal pay day, the 56 extra days that women need to work to earn the same on average that men earned last financial year. And when I think back, God, the FIFA World Cup hadn't even started, um, uh, you know, 56 days ago. Um, it's, you know, months of work and that differential uh, in the pay packets each and every week between men and women, uh, especially in these times of high cost of living, uh, is really important. What, missing, what is missing matters um, and it's a call out to everyone to uh, really champion uh, understanding the gender pay gap, doing the analysis, uh, and driving the change we need to see so we can accelerate the change and close the gender pay gap uh, for all Australians. Thanks very much for coming along.